everyone here, welcome back to yet another episode of Battle Rap Resume. We are here looking back on Don't Flop's tour. It's pretty much concluded now um, for the 10th birthday celebrations. They were doing something a bit different, a little bit more ramshackle. A lot of people had a lot of doubt in it, myself included, but it seems to have been pretty much uh, an unrivaled success this month battling wise so basically there's been six dates all in all some were cancelled for whatever reason spanning from the 5th of october friday there was a norwich event all the way up until the most recent event that went down on saturday 27th of october in reading i was there doing some bars to mine so today we're gonna sort of look back on the tour as a whole but mostly the penultimate dates uh, to which i was at in reading and my guest canel was at in bristol um canel how's it going uh, it's going pretty well. Like I've had a very, very busy month. Like and uh, uh, it, it weren't looking too great up yeah. until last week. And uh, now things are rosy. I'm officially coming off uh, headlining uh, the biggest battle rap event this weekend in the weekend that Nil Three happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, uh, when I was at the Reading event, everyone was absolutely hyped about the Bristol event that went the night down before. And multiple people told me they sold 199 tickets for the event. Yeah, it, it, it was crazy. Uh, flipping, I, I, I've been thinking about it a lot today, and I was thinking a lot about what a uh, pamphlet last said when it was on, like, because mm. uh, I've, I've had my uh, sort of criticisms of UK battle rap and how it's been run between the various brands this year, and I think it's been a bit too London centric, and I think people are a bit sick of going to London, and mm. uh, I think the. Old, and uh, also, it's been a bit too forum-centric. Now, I love everyone in the forum, but it's only 4,000 people. That can't be our only market. Like, One thing about the Bristol event is that I'd, I'd say less than 10% were like people from the forum. I'd say it was like mostly like hip-hop fans, you know, just yeah. casual rap fans and people like who just heard some music and wandered in because it was an affordable event. And like the battles themselves were quite accessible and all because, I mean, I think if... They'd been too bar heavy or in joke uh, or in jokey. People would be, people would be. Uh, what should we call it? Filtering out, but it didn't happen. Like, mm, yeah, it's funny you talk about that niche fan base because I was talking to a few fans uh, when I was at Reading, and there was this couple and this guy called Stu, and he was with his girlfriend, really nice guy. And the only reason he was there is because he went to school with Pamphlet. And that's how he found out about Don't Flop. He only knew Don't Flop, but he loved Battle Rap, had a great time there. And I was like, oh, well, you know, am I going to be seeing you tomorrow at nil? And he's like, what's that? And I was like, it's Code Red. He was like, what's that? I was like, it's in Camden. He's like, what's that? He didn't, these people don't know. They just know the DF brand, which boggles my mind. Uh, well, well, it does, but it also makes total flipping sense yeah. to me. Like, I mean, as a battler, like, you know, I'll, I'll be in conversations with people who don't know about it and say I'm into it. And the first thing they say is, oh, like, don't flop. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Yeah, it is that, that, it, that, it is that vanguard. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Like, I mean, a lot a lot, a lot of don't flop's biggest fans were, like, you know, only really new viewpoint and knew it through subscribing to the channel back when Mark Grist and Luna was popping and JME was retweeting Luna battles and things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And just before so, we get... So, um, and just, sorry, just before we get to the successes, yourself and the tour, as you say, it has been a crazy month for you. So can you just talk us quickly through the Young Crumpet L situations? Because both of those were weird uh, occurrences. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the the Young Crumpet battle, uh, as, as, most pe as most people will have heard by now, basically, um, uh, when, I was at the, when I was at the KOTR... When I was at KOTR uh, at Birmingham, when I was battling Double L, mm. I was speaking. I was speaking to uh, what should we call it? Uh, Will Ross, who, by the way, got to be flipping top three tryouts of the year. I'm here. And he was saying he wanted, yeah, and he was saying he wanted to be uh, what should we call it? Uh, he, he fancied like you know having a bit of a go. I was saying, mate, Dub Scandal's a place for you, like, yeah. and. Uh, Around about the time my mate Dave, who ended up dropping out, messaged me to ask how the double L battle was going on, and uh, and uh, said that he'd be quite interested in all. Now it didn't end up happening, but I thought, wow, I'd really look, like to see these two of me mates battling. So uh, what's your, and Dub Scandal would be the place for that. So I so I hit up John and uh, uh, DTH mm. and said like a. Uh, Hey, I think this would be a really good battle for your birthday. I'll tell you what, I'll do, I'll do one for you while I was there. 
I didn't I didn't want a headline or anything because I wanted to get finished a bit before the end so I could get pissed. So, uh, but, uh, and you know, you don't do a dub, I, I, I wouldn't go to dub scandal for the views. I go there for a laugh and because I love all the lads there. So, you know, Young Crumpet was getting a, a lot of love that particular day because uh, that was when he battled Max Pepsi, I believe. He was getting a lot of love on the update thread. So I thought, fuck it, why not? I'll do that. And, uh, uh, yeah, so uh, I, pre- I prepped for that one. And, uh, well, and when I got down there, uh, he's got he's got a lot on as young crumpet, like, yeah. and um, and uh, what should we call it? For whatever reason, he just didn't have his shit together on the day. Like he had a lot going on with his masters and everything. Uh, he sp- he spoke to me about it and said, like, look, the only way I could do this is if I read it off my phone. Hmm. And I, I I was happy with that because you know. I don't really need it on my win record. And, you know, it's still, it's still, you know, I could still get me rounds off and it's still, it's still entertain the people in the room. So although it didn't go, so it was a bit of a messy situation as a battle and he did end up reading, you know, I, I only did it for fun and it ends up being fun for the crowd. So yeah, one of them, one of them. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. It, it, looked, it looked like it came across. Yeah. Right. And I want to say, I love Connor. I actually had the chance to meet Connor properly for the first time I said next time. He is the absolute god of update threads. And it was weird at Neil, actually, because quite a few people were on the thread posting a lot of stuff there. But he still still reigns supreme. So, yeah, we can look forward to that battle. There's a highlight uh, video already shot by Lawrence on the Dub Scandal page. And, and the whole vibe looked crazy. They've already dropped, like, um, Most Prob versus O'Shea and Milky versus your and yeah the caliber there was stunning yeah. but you know people again were really looking forward to um you know on, on this is being on the same weekend when when versus debuted in the cinemas you versus Els. Els had a bit of a iffy comeback versus p soldier his personality came through again another person reading off his phone apparently lost his material beforehand and i can't say many people were surprised canel that perhaps you and him didn't didn't go off to a flying start but it was disappointing nonetheless uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm not sure what the exact... Uh, I understand he spoke to Dubowski, but uh, he now showed with no contact on the day. Mm. So I won't be rescheduling, you know. It was, yeah. It was, it, it, you know, it's it's quite annoying when you put time into something and, like, you know, you don't, you don't even hear any kind of contact afterwards. Like, or, or during the event. He said he'd be there at four. And uh, when it got round to four... When it got round to about half four, uh, Boski tried ringing him and his phone was turned off. So it is what it is. And uh, flipping around that time, flipping uh, Zane battle Magic Mike. And Zane was flipping brilliant. Yeah. And I was sort of walk, walking home with uh, the sort of feeling of dread, like I've just pissed a load of my fucking prep time up the wall on a fucking no-show. Mm. Fucking... Yeah. You, you know, I fuck it. You know, I've I've prepped for I've prepped nine rounds this month, and I've probably freestyled a, a round's worth of material and all. It's a lot of work. Yeah, I, but I'm yeah. hearing hearing that all the other battles from that KOTR event were crazy. Yeah, yeah, flipping. Uh, they were really good. Fantastic debut from uh, both Yaniff and Bluefoot. Flipping Mackenzie and Matt are flipping. When that drops, probably going to be one of your battles of the year. Mm. Flipping Frost and Devia on great form. Uh, yeah, and uh, for Magic Mike and flipping Zane creased me. So, yeah, flipping, look forward to all the all the uh, battles from that event because it was fantastic. And the, the tour as a whole, as I say, uh, kicked off in Norwich, of course, Friday the 5th of October. Um, I'm only sort of going off stuff I've misheard you know quotes on the forum or whatever and Ur actually sent me a photo of the crowd uh, for Centre versus Mickey and it seemed like they got a lot of people out um, seemed like a success have you heard anything about that night Canal? Uh, not really I don't know anything about it I, I, I think it's a good place you know flipping uh, both uh, Ur and, Ur and Sense are both from there yes. like and you know Flipping, kicking it, M- Mickey and Sense is like a fucking, you know, I think it was a freestyle battle and yeah. that's what you want, like a bit of fun, like, uh, you know, all your mates from your hometown there, all that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And, so, yeah. And part of the tie-in as well on the next Saturday was Shuffle versus Jazz, uh, which has since came out. What did you think about the battle in general? I thought it was really fucking good. Yeah. Yeah, definitely, like... Flipping, uh, what's call it? Uh, looking like it. it's been it's been doing numbers and all like 
It's got like 50k or something at the moment. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Flipping, flipping. Jazz, jazz really impressed me. Like, it's flipping. Because, uh, what should we call it? Uh, shuffles flipping. A bit of conversational multi style, like. <laughs> yeah. It's very. <laughs> It's, it's it's fucking got to be one of the most difficult styles to at, to attack or defend against in flipping battle rap because it, he doesn't even need to be really insulting or cutting to just make you look an idiot. But uh, flipping, I'd say she took it two one, you know. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I think so as well. I think she definitely came with a bit more interesting angles. And yeah, Shuffle can just get in his sort of comedian bag. And obviously, he's such a talent. He's so skilled. He didn't, And he kind of drilled home the I'm your girlfriend, this is a date thing a little bit too much for my taste. But, you know, like this tour as a whole, it's been cool seeing her and co taking Battle Rap to the, un, you know, unwell. Sort of people who would never have watched it before. Loads of these stuffy critics in their chairs. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's great. I'm glad they put on like a like a, a battle like that. Like, mm. I mean, like, I mean, like, although uh, what should we call it? Jazz has got quite a bar heavy style. Like, I think in that particular environment, like, you don't have to know too much about battle rap. Like. No, no, she she was definitely a good choice, and I mean some uh, some BRR insider info. I remember when me and Shufflo did the episode, which was quite a few months ago. Shuffle was saying that this battle was going down uh, as part of the screening, but it was going to be him versus my verse originally. Oh, really? Yeah, I think Jazz is a bit better choice. Yeah, yeah, so I think so too. Like, I, I don't think uh, what you call it. Uh, there'll be a better Marty verse battle in the UK than versus O'Shea. Like, yeah. Yeah, 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 true, yeah. Yeah, not, not that that would have mattered to the crowd present, but <laughs> no. it mattered to me. I'd be watching it thinking, ah, Osh was better. <laughs> and um, just before we get onto the main cards, the Bristol and Reading, uh, we had uh, Brighton and London going down the following weekend as well. One of the things that's cool about these cards is that the majority of the warm-up guys are coming from that um, trial by combat event that they did, and they dropped the highlights just recently. Did you get a chance to watch those? Yeah, I thought it was really good. Yeah. I thought it was a really clever way of doing it. Again, uh, what should we call it? I got flipping like again, like uh, like I say, like you know, oversaturation becoming a problem. So when when you have like forty guys battling all sharing the same video, it's going to do a lot more bits than uh, what should we call it? Like sharing twenty separate videos mm-hmm. and uh, and only two guys sharing them particularly when no one's got a fan base or anything to have like, you know, a video consistent exclusively of tryouts to flip and do 4k in a day in the first day, I believed something like that. Yeah. Really. And, and, and Natty, how great was she? Yeah. I thought she was brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. I thought she's a great, great addition to that lot. And yeah, that's a really fun video. Like I hadn't seen like something like that in battle rap for ages, just this influx of new talent you know, most of them are pretty intriguing. There's some familiar faces as well, uh, like Mike and Smart Alex and and Drown uh, and stuff like that. But yeah, yeah Drown Riser. Riser. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, still the, the other people. You, you know, you'd be hard pressed to see who was new and who wasn't. And I'm really excited to see how these goes down. So, um, let's get to the Bristol card then. So, was this a long time coming? You versus Zane? Because obviously you've been on the Don't Flop card, Retaliation. So, was this setting course from there or? Uh, well, well, uh, what's it called? I wasn't really on the retaliation cards. Uh, oh, yeah, you sort of just freestyled, right? Uh, yeah, I, ju- I just flip it like... I, re- I remember, like, uh, chin-, chin in cans of Tisky right. on the uh, on the tra- on the train with uh, Mickey and Bosky going on about, oh, flip it hell. This is the first time in, like, well over a year that I've been able to just go and just be completely hammered at an event without having to remember any bars. Yeah. Anyway, uh, and then flipping, uh, what should we call it? Land there. Oh, flipping river. There's a couple aren't coming. Like, how's your freestyle game? Uh, and I'm fucking battling Bonnie Godiva and Mickey with Boski. <laughs> <laughs> So, okay, I, I, I have no recollection how that flipping went, so uh, what should we call it? That should be an interesting one when it comes out. <laughs> yeah, uh, this went down at Mr. Wolf's in Bristol. I'm not really familiar with Bristol, but paint a picture. What was the venue like? Yeah, it was, a very, it was a very good venue. Like, I really liked it. Like, flipping, it, it was intimate, but, like, uh, had sizable spaces in it. Mm. Uh, very decent cocktail menu that I got to enjoy later on. Right. And uh, 
and uh, it was it was right on the street. Like I think this was part of this sort of perfect storm of reasons why this event popped. Is that uh, they had live music on from the start with the uh, Don't Flop House band, and uh, uh, I was I think it was like Lisa Lowe started off, or mm-hmm. not sure how you pronounce her name. Yeah. But uh, it, it was on a it's, it's on a street where like uh, it seems to be quite busy with people drinking. So I think like there was a lot of people who were just wandering past, just heard some really good live music, stuck their heads in. How much is this? Five are safe. I'm in. And uh, so yeah, yeah, flipping the crowd. So so it was a really good crowd in there. And like I say, less than flipping ten percent of it was like people from the forum. This is new fans. This is casual fans. So I. Uh, no, there wasn't any battles that were particularly like in joke heavy or anything like so. It definitely, you know, you know, we've we've won, we've won over new UK battle rap fans there, and a lot of them like. Did we uh, did we get any poetry from Craft D? That was on the flyer. Uh, what's it? Uh, I uh, don't think so. In the end, Craft D was there. He, uh, he he was behind the merch stall for most of it. Right. And uh, I actually I actually brought some of my family. Hmm. To uh, to this, and uh, I was quite glad I brought them to that. Like you know, because uh, the thing with the, the thing with having live music between the battles is that it kept the vibe going nicely. There, there wasn't loads of like standing outside smoking, waiting for someone to come outside and start herding people yeah. in. Flipping that that made a big difference. Like you know, you know, you know, people were people were dancing between battles. <laughs> yeah, you never yeah. see that. Yeah. No, no. Somebody just like sleepy, booming out grime, and just people trying to be heard. And then, oh yeah, there's some tryout. But no, that that's it. And I, I, I agree as well. When I went to uh, on Reading, the band are on point, keeping things going. So let's get into the battles then. Um, I'm hearing some crazy stuff about Tidal versus Crash. Both both BRR in the park alumni yeah. as well. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, uh, I think that was the second. I think that was the second battle. Okay, Loxy versus uh, Raptor uh, was first. Yeah, Loxy versus Raptor. A uh, very good battle. Probably the best I've seen Raptor, and Loxy was really good. Mm. Uh, it, it was quite interesting because I think uh, because I think Raptor was definitely like uh, having more impact with the uh, with the casual with the casual fans who drifted in. Like there was a lot of people who instantly took a liking to what he was doing. You know, we had, he, you know he had good hilarious. I think he said, uh, "Your pussy looks like Post Malone." Wow. Try <laughs> your statement. Always tired, mate. Always tired. Yeah. And uh And tide tidal, tidal, uh, tidal leveled up apparently. Uh well he's against Loxy. I, oh, yes. I did see like uh, Rabder and Tidal did battle at the Dub Scandal event. That's also very good. Yeah. But uh but uh yeah, we'll stay on point here. Mm-hmm. But yeah, yeah, Loxy Loxy was good. I think her stuff was like uh uh, what's she call it? Uh, she was a bit quiet, and, and it was a lot more. Uh, her stuff was a lot more cutting. Like mm. I think uh, Rabda was getting a bit more laughs, and she was getting a bit more hmms. Right. Yeah. As, yeah. You know what I mean. Like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, definitely. Yeah. And then, yeah. Uh, I'd, I'd, I'd probably had I probably had Rabda taking it personally, but like I say, it was two different styles. So you'll have to see for yourself when you came when you when it comes out. And uh, tidal v crash then. Yeah, this was this was this was very good again. I mean, obviously, been uh, been a fan of uh, tidal for a while now. I mean, like I, I was there at his tryout against Graza, uh, uh, KOTR, the future pagan inauguration, mm-hmm. which booted quite a few uh, what should we call it battle careers off in the UK. So I've been a fan of him for years, and uh, uh, crash. I don't, uh, the first time I saw him was at BRR in the park. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, he, I, you know, he, he made a fan of me then. Like, I went over and checked all this stuff. Uh, again, there's a, what should we call it, bit of a contrast in styles here, like. Uh, more, more of a street style from Crash, isn't it? With very yeah. good performance. And uh, Tidal, he's, he's a good writer, good freestyler, but the criticism of him in the past has been like, you know, he hasn't really had the performance to back his bars like. And he levelled up. This was certainly a fucking title 2.0, I reckon. I mean, why why was that? Was that just a projection? Because he's always had the bars. Uh, I th- he, j- he just had everything just... I think, I, think, I think it was timing when you know your shit and when you know your shit really well 
and you know exactly the spaces to leave, the cadence, and when when, when to drop punchlines and that. When you got that working right, when you got the the comic timing, the flipping rap the the rap timing, everything always hits harder. And he had that to a greater degree than he has had in the past. Like, I'd I'd, I'd say that won the battle for him personally. Like, okay. yeah, he had he had, some, he had some funny angles. Like, uh, sort of uh, approaching the old uh, sort of take it apart, crashes sort of gun bar approach. Like. Right. He d- did that nicely. Like uh, Crash had some really nice bars, but uh, I thought that these were two round. These were two uh, sixty-second round battles or two nineties, maybe. I should add, by the way, they were considered. They were considered tryouts. Hmm. And uh, and uh, the way that Tidal sort of dissected Crash's style in the second works really well for the audience because if he'd have done it in the first, they might not have known his style so yeah. well. Like. So, uh, what, so I thought I, I thought think that was like quite a contribution to like sort of keeping people around because, you know, there was a lot of people in there that those were the first live battles that they've seen and it it showed it showed them a way of how you can counter things and yeah yeah it was but it was brilliant like he just simply saying the line I have to tell you you do not have a gun right. absolutely flipping popped like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Uh, the uh, getting to the higher tier clashes now. Xander G versus Mister S. This is a grind clash. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm I'm not sure if that happened at the end. Uh, right. it, I think uh, what's recall that the two acapella battles happened, and uh, well, when there was any kind of grind behavior going on, I was uh, what's recall it hitting the two for one Tennessee sours. Mm. Uh, just walking around high fiving people and shit. <laughs> so, um, so uh, Mickey, Mickey versus Shorgy Bear, which is the most left field matchup I've heard in ages. Um, I mean, Shorgy people remember one of those sort of poetry also rans from that one extra roundhouse event. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, what you call it? She had, she had some good material, but uh, Mickey is Mickey. Like uh, she, she had some good writing, but. Uh, Flipping a delivery wasn't really, you know. I think she's used to more sort of spoken word crowds and uh, what should we call it? Two hundred people, two hundred people drinking, drinking in Bristol is not the same as a roundhouse. You can't get away with like quiet delivery and stuff. So, uh, yeah. So uh, I, th- I think Mickey kind of overpowered her, like just by just by shouting mental things and being Mickey, like. <laughs> Oh, man. But like, like I said, like, like I say, a lot of the people in the audience didn't come in as battle fans, but they all knew his fucking slogan and were shouting it along at the right, end. Right, right, right. He's yeah. a rock star. Like he's breakout. That's that's so good to see. And yeah, I've I've heard. Didn't he have yeah. some like about being so woke? His missus is a bloke or something like that. Yeah, I'm so woke. My bird is a bloke. And if any of you say I'm gay, I'm having you banned from Facebook and Twitter. <laughs> what else is offensive? Right. <laughs> he, 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 was just, he was just blazing through like that. It was a fantastic performance. And uh, let's get to you versus Zane then. I mean, yeah. you were saying that this is one of the best crowds you performed in, in years. Uh, uh, I wouldn't say, uh, wouldn't say years. Like, uh, this, this year? In the, it, in the UK this year, like I got a shout, I got a shout out the flipping last words to crowd in Dublin. Oh yeah, yeah, flipping. Uh, what you call it? that was that was an electric atmosphere. But but yeah, it was, the, the the crowd were fully hyped. Like it was directly after the Shogi battle, and uh, like Zane had been walking around carrying a bag with something he printed out in it. So I thought, oh fucking hell, here we go, mm. fucking Mark Chris with a laptop all yeah, over yeah. again. <laughs> And uh, as as we made our way to the stage, we took our positions, and Zane pulls out a fucking large printout of a picture of me from ten years ago when I was in a coma on a life support machine, and starts holding it over his head. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that, 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 that's a pretty strong start, considering yeah. this is before Er had got to the stage to flip and introduce us. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that, that that that's a very strong way of introducing yourself to an audience and introducing me to the audience. But uh, yeah, I do I work really hard on this one. As I say, like I've been busy this month. But you know, Zane, he does the comedy. He, he does the disrespect. 
So I thought, got to go hard on the disrespect myself. And it, it, it fucking popped. The whole battle did. I feel like I won it, like. Um, but Zane was really, really good. He had some good lines. I was too busy, like, sort of thinking of, thinking of my next line and thinking of flips to actually remember them. But, uh, but yeah, it, it, yeah, it went well. I, I mean, uh, most people I spoke to told me I won, but that's what people say when you speak to them afterwards. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, 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 when they, it's when they're not addressing you that you, uh, what, that you find out the real thing. So, I don't know, maybe I, maybe I fucking, uh, maybe people feel like I lost, but, yeah, there was a, but, yeah, I, I, flipping everything I thought would get reaction, got big reaction. And Zane got Zane got plenty of good reaction and all. Like like I say, like I brought some of my family, like and uh, uh, my mum was at the back. <laughs> so and obviously, obviously, yeah, my mum was there, my girlfriend was there. So obviously, Zane's got playing mum material and uh, <laughs> and her girlfriend material, etc. But. Uh, as I sort of briefed them before we went to the event, like you're not really talking about someone's actual girlfriend or actual mum, are you? They're, they're a hypothetical construct. So yeah, yeah, that was pretty good. God, that's so like it's so great that you guys battle. I think we're both winners. I mean, I spoke to Zane the next day. He was at the Reading event and he was going crazy over the battle as well. He was raving about the crowd and a lot of people online. And there's been a few like brief videos. I'm sure you've seen that people uploaded and shared on Twitter and stuff. And the crowd just look electric. They look so into what's going on. Yeah, yeah, it was fucking fantastic. Like, I mean, like uh, when you're performing to a big crowd like that. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm used to, I'd like, you know, when I've done music gigs or, like, you know, DJ gigs in the past, like, you know, I've, I've seen crowds like that. But generally, when I'm performing to a battle crowd, flipping, you know, at this point, I generally know nearly everyone personally in the room, like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Flipping, you know, the only, the only people I really knew were a couple of people, a couple of people off the forum. Flipping, me family was sat right at the back with flipping crafty on the merch stall and mm-hmm. press one. Like those were the only sort of people in the crowd I knew. Like so, I was really glad I took. I was really glad I took the approach I did. Like rather than flipping, talking about is you know because obviously I, there's a lot you could say about Zane. A lot he's said in previous battles, but I decided not to talk about that. You know, just talk about what was in front of me. I don't think the battle would have gone as well if I was like talking about the plans battle and Mark Grist and all this kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Pre- Press one actually tweeted, "Don't flop." Bristol was sick. Canel smashed it. Met his mum, lovely lady. Yeah, <laughs> flipping. Uh, what should you call it? Uh, he j- flipping. Uh, he, j- he jumped on with the uh, band later. Like there was a lot of different MCs performing with him, and my mum was flipping dancing the whole time. Right. We, yeah, she was flipping asking. I was, I sent her like uh, links on YouTube to flipping the Super MC uh, EP and all. Like <laughs> she's a flipping fan now. Shit, get down with that lemonade. That's all I'm saying. I mean, press press makes some uh, incredible music. I guess to round out the night, anything else go down of interest, battle rap wise, there in Bristol? Uh, well. Uh, I, I don't know. It was flipping pretty much party time yes. from then on for me. Like, yeah. and uh, it it was a party crowd, man. It it was a party crowd. You know, doing it doing it in the evening, having an affordable thing, having music between the battles, not having too many battles, not having battles that were too, that are too long or to, or required too much knowledge. Flipping it all just it all just made it work. Like it did feel like a, it did feel like a party. Like, and. I can't, I can't really I can't really recall uh experiencing experiencing that in the UK. Mm-hmm. I really, you know you know uh definitely in a what should we call it shout out no coast that's what it's like when you go over there. But uh in the UK yeah and and like I say it's 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 it's, it's me the whole thing made me feel a lot better about the de- direction of UK battle rap in general. I mean like like I say like flipping is it Sold more tickets than nil three with like that incredible lineup, yeah. like, yeah. and uh, and I mean like uh, nil three, big em up looks like that event was absolutely amazing, but it, it you do have to look at the facts that uh, when that event sold out, flipping that was before Chiller pulled out and Excel pulled out, yeah. so 
So if, if do, do, doing an event in London, like you need to be having like three internationals to shift a hundred odd tickets, like. But if it's probably time to give London a bit of a rest and, do, and uh, pay attention a bit more to the rest of the country, like I think that's what's working there, like. Yeah, and, and they pushed on to Reading, which is where I was on Saturday. This is in South Street, which I'd never been to before, quite close to the train station. Your kind of classic, like, arts lab, sort of small stage theatre venue. There's, like, two or three rooms there. It's all very clean. It's all very modern. They've got the expensive bar. So I get there about 6 o'clock or so, and there's quite a lot of people there. There's probably about 50 people waiting in this small bar room. And I was thinking, bloody hell, this really is popping off, like, knowing where Bristol was going. And, I mean, I did the live mastermind as well, so I was quite excited. When we did it in BR in the park, that was a yeah. tiny little thing. This one would actually yeah. have a full-on, you know, audience. I was Studio nervous. Studio audience. Yeah, exactly. I was like, are people going to shout the answers? What's going to happen? You know, mm. blah, blah. So we're going through, yeah. and when eventually... So does it work a lot better with out evil, would you say? <laughs> I think, yeah, like most things in life, anything about evil is, uh, is, uh, is a lot oh, better. Big up there. little evil, oh, yeah, like, yeah. but there's a time and a place for him. <laughs> um, but it turned out there was actually a heavy metal gig in the other room, so the crowd sort of dissipated to a certain extent. But there was still a lot of people there. And we went in there and we sort of kicked off on the tryout. So we had Hox versus J. Cruz. Hox was one of the guys who came through on the Trial by Combat videos. J. Cruz, of course, yeah. needs no introduction. Uh, he was also on the Trial yeah. by Combat videos, uh, ripping yeah, off some yeah. bars. He's, yeah. he's, 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 been, he's been busy on the forums lately. Yeah, he has. He certainly has. Yeah. Brought yeah. A lot of entertainment there. And um, yeah, that wasn't, that wasn't a bad battle. Again, these battles worked well for the crowd. It did feel... I've got to be honest with you, the crowd did feel a little muted here. And I think when you watch these back, you'll notice it's like me, Sean and Er laughing and, and pretty much no one else. You can hear them like it was a bit deflated. Yep. So when it got to this. Uh, point, what, what, what was it? Uh, what, so how were they sort of content wise? Content wise. Were, were, yeah, were, were they more bar heavy or were they? It wasn't yeah, I mean, more. like, what, was it accessible? Like to like, like you say, there's going to be people in there who weren't so familiar things. So do you think their content was maybe a bit too battle rap orientated rather than casual fan rather than what would appeal to casual fans would you I say i don't even know to be honest because the, the second one cj cooley versus breakout again these are new guys they've got really no shared history or lineage and they were going at yeah. each other and this again was quite fun i just don't know if the quality out and out was there i can like when you were mentioning someone like tidal like i can imagine someone like him excuse the pun can turn the tide of the room like you know he yeah. can really he really lock into that sort of uh that spirit there but it wasn't necessarily bad but it definitely felt slightly off and it was at this point um, before the break when we were originally supposed to have live Barcelona before the main battles that Erg sort of got us around the table and said quite rightly look these people aren't really battle rap people like they're not really interested in it it doesn't really make sense for us to throw on this very very niche game show in the middle and hope for them to be quiet and not be bored so we sort of agreed we announced here that we do the game show at the end of the night and um, you know if people wanted to stay that they're welcome to stay I don't remember yeah the... good idea right yeah. thought yeah exactly you don't want to you don't want to thrust it upon them so we had um I don't know if the Grime Clash went down. I might have missed that original J, who used to be LJ on Words of Weapons, was there against uh, LW. But we saw Lefty versus Impact, which I know has been touring the whole country. Um, that was a really fun battle. That was a very much you look like bars, which were they, they worked. Yeah, yeah, that's what you need for casual fans. I understand that uh, they did that battle again yesterday to about 20 people in a poetry festival in Norwood. <laughs> yeah, I saw those tweets as well. Yeah, apparently it was a, mm -hmm. a wild success. I think it was mostly kids, uh, middle-aged Muslim mm -hmm. mothers there for some tea. Or Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> and to be honest, some of their bars as well would have, uh, would have played into those biases, I don't think, very well. But yeah, we had Crisis versus Hulk which was a really, really fun clash. Unfortunately, Crisis choked quite badly at the start of his third. I think Hulk took that. Um, and it was great that Hulk had bars about paying Kruger and Er was the only one who laughed. Yeah, yeah, flipping. You know, that's Hulk-like. Yeah. He's not afraid, he's not afraid of uh, saying something. No, no. Um, 
but yeah, this was this was good. Again, I mean, the whole event was okay. Um, you know, all in all, it's kind of what it is going to Reading, trying these things. At least there's a lot of people there who are enthusiastic, and it was good to see Zayn and Impact and everyone like that. And yet, at the end of the day, we did the live bars to mind. Uh, we did a don't flop special. So loads of lineup changes, but eventually, what we had was um, we had Sean and Impact versus Mickey and Zayn. So that was that was fun. We had it sitting down. Oh, brilliant! Yeah, yeah. yeah. We we had it when it's we had a stationary camera in front of me as the host in the middle, and then we had um, someone else filming the sort of reaction shots as we went through. It was really good. The feedback was um, there were you know some people in the room as well listening, but some people came, some people left. No one was that too entranced, but there's a few there. The feedback was Canel that apparently the questions were too hard. They were too difficult, which I can sort of see. Yeah, yeah, def- uh, definitely. Like, like I, I used to run, a, I used to run a pub quiz like about ten years ago mm. when I was a bar manager, and like I, I tried to write my own questions. I, I quickly thought, yeah, you know, I, I quickly found you run out of things that other people know like yeah. quite quickly when you've used all your best questions in your first few. You you, st- you start dipping into the more niche bits of your knowledge, like so. Mm-hmm. I'm guessing, you know. Uh, Blast of Mind has definitely got harder as it's gone on, like, yeah. certainly, so. Yeah, yeah, I mean, some some fans, um, okay. such as Kieran and Ben, helped me out and gave me some questions. And, like, some of the rounds where you do a letter and you go back to back and that sort of stuff. And there was one round, I won't spoil it, there was one round where Mickey just cleaned up. He just got every question mm-hmm. right pretty much instantly, which was really impressive. The guy knows history. I mean, let me throw one question at you that I didn't think was too difficult. Um, in Shotty versus Arsenal, Shotty references what Tom Cruise film? What Tom Cruise film? Yeah. It's one of his like bigger, <laughs> bigger bars of the battle. Do you know what? I've watched that battle at least five times. Yeah. I can't think of a Tom Cruise reference. Yeah, I, but... I, I guess it's more seen as a Dustin Hoffman film, but he references Rain Man. Oh, man, I'd, I'd, have, I'd have got it if you'd have said oh. flipping, uh, what should we call it? Uh, I'd have got oh, it if you'd have said that, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Flipping. Because it is a Dustin Hoffman I film. Guess it Tom is. Cruise. <laughs> Tom Cruise was just Tom Cruise was just in it flipping. Well, when you say when you say the words Tom Cruise flipping, you go Mission Impossible, you go Top Gun, you go you you go That's you go samurai. action films yeah, like yeah yeah yeah. So yeah, that, I mean, but but that is coming out. That was really fun. We're going to get Ben to edit that as the last one was edited as well, and and the guys were great and the vibe was great. So yeah, I'm looking forward to get that out. But um, I mean that 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 sort of brings us to the end of Don't Flop, and I heard some rumblings, I don't want to give anything away, but I spoke to some people in Don't Flop, and you know, what they're planning for next year, some of the cards um, is really exciting, some of the matchups, and some of the sort of ways they're approaching things are quite original and refreshing, but um, I mean, all, all signs are pointing quite positive for the league, right, despite the stormy year they've had. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like, I, like I say, like they're, they're they're trying new things at a time we need new things trying, mm-hmm. and uh, it's a, and I'm, I'm I'm really happy it's paying off. Like, like I say, like having events that bring in casual fans is what we need. Big up everyone on you on the UK Battle Rap Forum, but that is only four thousand people, and uh, we need to be reaching more people. And like when we start bringing these casual fans in, that's when things can really start popping again. And what about yourself? I mean, we're pretty much at the end of 2018. We're coming to November now. Do you have any battles booked at the moment? I do, but uh, what should we call it? Big secret. Okay. But uh, yeah, yeah. But that, but that's in that's in two weeks, and uh, uh, you, you'll find out about that when you find out about it. I will say it's probably uh, my most difficult opponent to date, but I've had some hard opponents. But uh, yeah, yeah, that's going to be a thing. So I can't, I can't really shout that out. What, uh, what, what can I shout out? Yeah, uh, with it being Halloween, with it being Halloween uh, to, uh, on Wednesday, I uh, should add uh, that uh, Kelly Betts and Bone Man over on over over at No Coast oh, yeah. uh, re- re- recorded this right mad little album, which uh, which uh, I uh, appear on one track of. It's called Body Snatches. That like. Uh, uh, Kelly Betts and Bone Man present Body Snatchers, and it's it's all music. Uh, all, all the all the beats from it are made from like samples of like uh, Rob Zombie and White Zombie music. Mm. Like like edits it out. Uh, Mo- Mo- Bone Man rapping over them, so it, it, it it's 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 like almost like new new metal, like you know. <laughs> 
you, you know, the, 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 the beats like, you know, you yeah. can flip and play it next to like flip and slip. No, it sound sure. all right. But, you know, they are rappers. So you've got shit like multis in there and, you, you know, is it that like multis wordplay, you know, it's good lyricism. I track on that, like alongside DJ Pompey doing some scratching over an instrumental uh, based on a sample of white zombies more human than human. So, uh, yeah, that's at kellybets.bandcamp.com. Uh, the Body Snatchers. So that's a free album. Go over and check that out. I think I think there's like uh, five videos on YouTube and all if you want to give them a nose. So yeah, that. Like I say, I've had a very busy month for my week off. Uh, I did a, I did two bar videos, uh, which should be coming out on Larix Entertainment, which is a Wrexham based sort of collective of hip hop artists. Uh, one's just me, and uh, the other ones with a uh, Rex with a uh, Wrexham crew called Lizzie Squad. Mm. They're very good. Uh, so uh, if, you, if you follow Larynx Entertainment on Facebook, they'll be dropping on there eventually, but I think they've got a big, big, big queue of shit to release. Like uh, the, the stuff from, uh, what should we call it, uh, everyone's favourite Luke Harvey at the minute on there, you know, and uh, like like a lot of Welsh acts and uh, a lot of Welsh hip-hop acts. So follow Larynx Entertainment there. And uh, have I got anything else to plug? Uh yeah, uh, what, I believe Dub Scandal Battle with Crumpet drops on Sunday. And uh, obviously my uh, Battle with Ted is out now on King of the Dot. Yes. yes. Yeah. Very, yeah, very, very cool with a uh, Briggsy soliloquy referencing for good measure as well from Ted. But that, yeah, that is, a, that is a fire fucking battle. Really entertaining clash from you guys. We'll put the link down below uh, to the Kelly Betts uh, Bowman mixtape as well. Had Kelly on the show uh, discussing No Coast Battles about a year ago, so great episode. Definitely check that out. Um, follow us at Bower Up Resume. Patreon if you'd like to support. Bower Up Resume, gmail.com if you want to get in touch. Subscribe. Uh, leave us a review on iTunes, all that stuff we always mention. Uh, check out these Don't Flop clashes as well. Barstow will be coming soon. That's going to be on the Don't Flop channel in a matter of weeks, months, something like that. But, um, yeah, Canel, as always, thank you, sir. Hey, not a problem, mate, not a problem. Have a good one, laugh.